Hello my dear students, Assalamu alaikum. Hope you are doing good. I am Dr. Korim Rizwan Hassan, Associate Professor, Department of Anatomy, Adin Sumil's Medical College. Today I will discuss about the thigh. As you know, thigh has different compartments. One of the important compartment is the anterior compartment or extensor compartment. Anterior or extensor compartment is an important part of the thigh because it is helping for the extension of the knee joint which is very much fundamental for walking, running and every other possible movements. Now today, I will mainly focusing on the cutaneous supply of the thigh and we will have a very detailed discussion about the muscles of the thigh, their nerve supply and their actions. And we will see the organization of the different compartments of the thigh along with the muscles. So let's start. The thigh is the region between the hip and the knee joints. As you can see, here is the hip joint which is present in between the acidabulum of the hip bone and the head of the femur. And over here you can see the knee joint. So thigh is the region in between the hip joint and the knee joint. Thigh is quite thicker portion of the lower limb. The region below the knee joint is called the leg. The leg is extended from the knee joint and the ankle joint. And after the ankle joint, the most distal part is called the feet. Now, the main topic of today's discussion is the three compartments of the thigh. Thigh is having anterior or extensor compartment, medial or adductor compartment, posterior or flexor compartment. The anterior and the posterior compartment are separated by the medial and lateral intramuscular septa. We will see that septa. The adductor muscle do not have a facial boundary but are continuous with the posterior compartment. So let's see the organization. You know that thigh is covered by the skin. Suppose this is the skin. And we are seeing the cross section of the mid thigh portion. This is the anterior area. This is the posterior area. This is the medial aspect and this is the lateral aspect. Just after cutting the skin, what we will see? We will see a very thin layer of connective tissue, which is mainly composed of subcutaneous fat. It is also known as the subcutaneous fascia. We have given yellow color because it is composed of fat, which are yellow. Then after the subcutaneous fascia, we will see the deep fascia or fascia lata. Fascia lata is the deep fascia of the thigh. It is composed of dense irregular connective tissue. Now this is the femur, which is present at the mid portion of the thigh. Now you can see there are two septa which is arising from the femur and it is going to the deep fascia. These are called the intramuscular septa. There are two intramuscular septa, medial intramuscular septum and the lateral intramuscular septum. And now you can see that in between the medial and the lateral intramuscular septum, there are actually three compartments. The medial and the lateral intramuscular septum is dividing the anterior or extensor compartment from the medial or adductor compartment and also from the posterior or the flexor compartment. Now let's start with the cutaneous nerve of the front of the thigh. The front of the thigh is having mainly three cutaneous nerves. The lateral cutaneous nerve, the medial cutaneous nerve and the intermediate cutaneous nerve. In this picture you can see this is the medial cutaneous nerve, this is the intermediate cutaneous nerve and this is the lateral cutaneous nerve. Also, thigh is innervated by femoral branch of the genitofemoral nerve, ilioinguinal nerve, and patellar plexus of nerve. Remember, these cutaneous nerves are very much important because this cutaneous nerve is giving the cutaneous supply of the thigh. Any skin sensation, pain, touch, temperature, pressure, vibration, whatever the sensation is, that is carried out by the cutaneous nerves. Now let's see what are the muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh. There are basically six muscles, pectineus, sartorius, then quadriceps femoris. The name quadriceps femoris is very important because here we can see that quadri means four. Quadriceps femoris is basically having four muscles. The muscles are rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius and vastus medialis. Let's start with the pectineus muscle. Pectineus muscle is one of the important muscle of the thigh, which is basically arising from the hip bone and it is attached also 
with the femur. Now this small pectineus muscle is having the origin from the pectineal line of the superior pubic ramus and also it is giving insertion to the upper end of the linea aspera of the femur. Linea aspera from the previous discussion we know that it is the posterior border of the femur. Now the nerve supply is obviously femoral nerve. Root value is number 3 and 4 and the action is the flexion and the adduction of the thigh at the hip joint. In this picture we can see the pectineus which is coming from the pectineal line at the superior ramus and it is going to the linea aspera over here. Now one of the most important muscle is the sartorius. Sartorius muscle is the longest muscle of the body which is strap like and it is covering a very big area of the thigh. Almost it is coming from the hip bone and it is going to the tibia. That means this is the muscle which is crossing two joints, hip joint and the knee joint. So this muscle is having some of the actions over this joint. So let's see. The origin of the sartorius is coming from the anterior superior iliac spine and the insertion is at the upper part of the medial surface of the tibia. Sartorius is one of the important muscle in the guy ropes. You know, the guy ropes are mainly formed by the three muscles from the three compartment. Sartorius from the anterior compartment, gracilis from the medial compartment and the semitendinosus from the posterior compartment. Now the functions of the sartorius. The sartorius is doing the flexion and the lateral rotation of the hip joint and it is also doing some kind of weak abduction at the hip joint. At the same time it is doing the flexion and the medial rotation of the leg at the knee joint. So very obviously flexion lateral rotation at the hip joint and the flexion and the medial rotation at the knee joint. Quite interesting functions. In this picture we can see sartorius is coming from the anterior superior leg spine and it is going to the upper end at the medial aspect of the tibia. Now sartorius is also having a special property that is it is also forming the boundary of the femoral triangle. As you already know that femoral triangle is a triangular area at the front of the thigh which is bounded by the inguinal ligament above and laterally at the medial border of the sartorius and the medially at the medial border of the adductor longus. So sartorius is also forming the boundary of the femoral triangle. This area white area is the femoral triangle. Now we are placing sartorius in the anterior compartment. Now we will discuss about the quadriceps femoris. Remember quadriceps femoris is are the those muscles which are basically forming the extensor compartment of the thigh. They are the powerful extensor of the thigh. All of them are supplied by the femoral nerve which is the nerve of the anterior compartment of the thigh. Now these muscles are coming from the different areas but the thing is that they are basically giving insertion to the same area because their tendons are joined to form a common tendon which is called the quadriceps tendon and those quadriceps tendon is passing over the patella and after that that tendon will be named as the patellar ligament or the patellar tendon and giving insertion to the tibial tuberosity. Rectus femoris is the first muscle. It is the most superficial muscle at the anterior compartment of the thigh among the quadriceps. Now it is the only member of the quadriceps muscle which is attached to the hip bone and the superficial fibers of the rectus femoris are the bipinnate muscles and the deep fibers are straight. We can see the rectus femoris over here. The origin is coming from the two heads, the straight head and the reflected head. The straight head is coming from the upper half of the anterior inferior iliac spine and the reflected head is coming from the groove above the margin of the acetabulum and the capsule of the hip joint. The insertion, obviously I have said the insertion is done by the quadriceps tendon which is the combined tendon of the, all the quadriceps muscles and it will go to the patella and thereafter it will go to the tibial tuberosity as patellar ligament. Now we are putting the rectus femoris at the anterior compartment over here. Then the vastus medialis, the name itself says that it is a component of the quadriceps femoris but it is placed in the medial aspect. The origin the lower part of the intertrochanteric line, the spiral line, medial leap of the linea aspera, upper one fourth of the medial supracondylar line. Let's see. This is the 
intertrochanteric line and it is coming from the lower part of the intertrochanteric line over here. Then it is going to the posterior aspect as the spiral line. Over here you can see the spiral line which is the medial border or the medial lip of the gluteal tuberosity. Then it is going to the linea aspera in its medial lip and then it is going to the upper one fourth of the medial supracondylar line. This red area indicates its origin. The insertion is at the medial one third of the base and the upper two third of the medial border of the patella via the quadriceps tendon. Now we are placing the vastus medialis over here just at the lateral aspect of the sartorius and behind the rectus femoris. Now the vastus lateralis. Vastus lateralis is arising from the upper part of the intertrochanteric line, anterior and inferior border of the greater trochanter, lateral lip of the gluteal tuberosity, linea aspera, lateral supracondylar ridge or lateral supracondylar line. Over here you can see this is the upper part of the intertrochanteric line, then it is going anterior and the inferior aspect of the greater trochanter and it is going to the posterior aspect where it is following the lateral leap of the gluteal tuberosity and then it is going to the lateral leap of the linea aspera and ultimately going to the lateral supracondylar line. And ultimately vastus lateralis is inserted to the lateral border of the patella via the quadriceps tendon. We are placing the vastus lateralis over here. Then vastus intermedius. It is the deeply placed muscle just behind the rectus femoris. The origin is from the anteromedial and the anterolateral surface of the lower two-third of the shaft of the femur, as you can see from here. And it is inserted into the superficial aponeurysis, which forms the deep part of the quadriceps tendon. That means it is ultimately going to the quadriceps tendon to the patella. We are placing the vastus intermedius over here. So we can see how the anterior compartment muscles are arised within this anterior compartment. So this is the picture where we can see sartorius, then pectineus, then rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis. Behind the rectus femoris there will be vastus intermedius. Nerve supply, we already discussed the nerve supply that all the muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh will be the femoral nerve. In this picture we can see the sartorius is innervated by the femoral nerve is an important branch of the lumbar plexus. This is the sartorius and all the muscles of the quadriceps femoris is supplied mainly by the femoral nerve. As you can see the femoral nerve is descending down below the inguinal ligament and it is giving supply to the, all the muscles of the quadriceps femoris. So let's see the summary of muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh in a tabulated form. Sartorius origin is from the anterior superior ligament spine insertion to the super aspect of the medial surface of the tibia shaft near the tibial tuberosity. It flexes and the lateral rotates the hip and flexes and the medial rotation of the knee. Nerve supply is the femoral nerve, blood supply femoral artery. Rectus femoris origin from the straight head of the anterior inferior ilicus spine, reflected head from the groove just above the acetabulum, inserted into the base of the patella from more central portion of the quadriceps femoris tendon. It's doing the action of extension of the knee. Nerve supply is the femoral nerve and blood supply is the lateral circumflex femoral artery. Vastus medialis origin is from the inferior intertrochanteric line, spiral line, medial lip, linea aspera, superior medial supracondylar ridge of the femur, medial intravascular septum, insertion is to the medial aspect of the base and the border of the patella, nerve supply is the femoral nerve, action is the extension of the knee, blood supply is the femoral artery through the profunda femoris artery and the superior medial genicular branch of the popliteal artery. Vastus lateralis coming from the superior intertrochanteric line, anterior and the inferior border of the greater trochanter, superior portion of the lateral lip of the linea aspera, lateral portion of the gluteal tuberosity, and inserted into the base of the lateral border of the patella and ultimately to the quadriceps tendon. Action is the extension of the knee, nerve supply is the femoral nerve, blood supply is the lateral circumflex femoral artery. Vastus intermedius. Origin is the superior two-third of the anterior and the lateral surface of the femur, also from the lateral intravascular septum, inserted into the lateral border of the patella, extension of the knee, its dysfunction, nerve supply is the femoral nerve, blood supply is the lateral circumflex femoral artery. So my dear students, today I have discussed about the muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh. In the coming days, I will discuss about the blood supply, 
and the venous drainage and the, that means the artery supply and the venous drainage of the anterior compartment of the thigh. Till then, stay safe.